We came to the park today so that I can talk to you about how YouTube has changed our lives and also so that we can get the kids out of the house and give them an opportunity to play. So Elena's gonna watch the kids and I'm gonna talk to you about YouTube. And just a little insight into our day. We took Pierce's passy away yesterday or the day before. So right now we're working on keeping him distracted so that we don't lose our minds and so he doesn't lose his mind. We started our YouTube channel in 2020, like a lot of people. And the reason was that it was something that I thought about doing for a really long time, but our schedules were disrupted and it created an opportunity for me to finally start something that I had just been thinking about for a while. You want some help? Okay, you can do it. Toddler life is, yeah, he wants way. to do it himself, but he wants help, <laughs> but he also wants to do it himself. Part of the disruption was that there were some times that were normally scheduled for work that I was now free and open, but Elena's work opened back up a little earlier. And so I would drive her on Saturday down to the dog grooming shop where she worked down from our house. And I would drive back home and I would turn on the television for Vivian to watch some Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and then I would just lay down on the sofa and watch her watch Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and zone in and out of consciousness. And about that time usually it was time for lunch so I'd make her some lunch and then give her lunch and then by then it was nap time so she'd lay down and take a nap and I would lay down and take a nap too. Night night Vivian. Can you say night night? And she was only two years old at the time, but they grow up so fast, right? And I just remember thinking, are these the only memories that we're gonna make with our daughter? And I'd always been fascinated by the concept of making YouTube videos and the business side of it. At the time, finance YouTubers like Graham Stephan and Andre Zik were blowing up too. So I was watching them talk about the business side and the financial side of YouTube. And it was really fascinating to me. But for me, travel content was always interesting because I grew up in a very small town in Virginia. And I think one of my big goals in life was just to get out of that town. It has a declining population and there really isn't that much to do around there and there really aren't a lot of jobs as there weren't a lot of opportunities and there's a great big wide open world out there. And every time we would take a trip somewhere, I would look on YouTube to find out what there was to do in that particular area. And I would look up a resort in advance to find out what the resort looked like. And I would look up cruise ships in advance and watch cruise ship tour videos to find out what the cruise ships looked like. And even if I was going on a particular cruise, when I would start watching videos about one cruise, then I would watch videos about lots of other cruise ships as well. It was then that I started thinking though in 2020 with our daughter there in the living room that the whole world vacations in our backyard because we live in Florida and many of those things I had never gone out to see or explore the cities across our state because I had been so busy with work and also because we didn't feel like we had the finances to do any of the things. Point of view, one kid loves to swing and that's all she wants to do. Other kid will not swing to save his life. You wanna swing? You wanna go swing? So I wanted to find a way that we could provide value for other people and help them to be able to maybe plan their vacations as we created memories together as a family and developed some new experiences ourselves. What you do is throw it at him. <laughs> Open, Henry! Okay. <laughs> he wants to climb on you. Frankly, learning how to do YouTube was a little more difficult and a little more complicated than I initially expected that it was going to be. One, two. There's such a broad skill set that is involved with being a, a solopreneur and starting your own business. It's a long way up the stairs. <laughs> we made it. And especially if it's in a field 
in which you have no previous experience, like for me, content creation and video making and videography and photography and video editing and all of those things were all brand new things to me. And you can tell by looking at our earliest videos because they were not very good. In fact, some of them were so embarrassing um, as we continued to progress that I just went ahead and hid them and they're available privately just on our Patreon. All right, so we're here in our living room and uh, I have an idea. Okay. What's your idea? But I will definitely say that the journey has been worth it because I've enjoyed learning the skills and the skills have helped me in other areas of my professional life. Because social media and digital marketing is such a necessary and vital skill in so many industries today. So Pierce actually does not like playgrounds at all. He thinks he does. If he sees one, he'll say playground, but he hates them. He literally just tries to escape and he doesn't want to play anything. And also as we've developed these skills, we've been able to benefit from creating a business financially, but then also being able to trade and barter those skills for some of the experiences that we wanted to make with our children. And this is probably a good place for me to insert that in all honesty, it takes a while to develop financially on YouTube and that the financial profitability is a little bit farther of a distant goalpost than I initially expected that it was going to. I will say, however, that there are a few things that I wish we knew a little earlier in the game about how to develop some alternative streams of income. If you'd like to know more about that, then tell us in the comment section below. So Pierce actually made a little friend and I was so excited. I was like, yay, he made a friend at the playground, but it was just so he could play with his toy. And now Pierce has the toy and I don't know where the friend is. So yeah, that's pretty much where we are right now. And frankly, just as it has provided opportunity, it's also provided accountability for us to go out and make memories with our kids because on some days where we might have the day off and we might have just lazed around the house and not really done anything together as a family. Instead, we've known that we've had to get out that next video and it's caused us to create a calendar of doing things together as a family. Of course, we've had to be intentional about rest days and things like that as well. All right, so he actually played on that little toy for almost an hour. He just went back and forth and thankfully the little boy's mom said that that was okay. So we kept him entertained for a little bit there, and now he's starting to get hungry. So I'm heading to the van to get a snack. All right, we got a little snack. Now he's just sitting here enjoying that. We're watching Sissy Christmas play tree. on the swings. Mommy, yeah. Christmas tree. Is that a Christmas tree? Wow, you love your snacky? But it's caused our family to look forward to our days off together because our kids know that we're going to go somewhere with them and spend time with them and make memories with them and that they're going to be able to participate in activities and do some unforgettable things. And ultimately the memories that we've been able to make this far have been absolutely invaluable. And I know that as we continue to level up our skills and develop as we move forward, we're going to be able to make even more memories. But as we were starting our YouTube journey, here are a few things that we wish that we knew from the beginning about making travel content. 